Well, this evening we are going to review uh, some of the owner's literature that came with my 78 Buick Electra here. We're going to, um, I'm going to show you guys the, the warranty information and uh, just a little bit about uh, the history on this car. Okay, so we have here the keys. This is just the spare set. You can tell it's just um, on a small little zip tie. I keep the original set um, at my garage. Okay, so anyway, I'm going to take it out of this fancy little cellophane holder here. So anyway, um, so the manual is absolutely in pristine condition. Uh, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. There's no uh, tears in the spine. Uh, we got a little bit of wear just right here on the side. Like it's been rolling around in the glove compartment probably since 1978. We take a look at the back. We've got a little bit of scuffs here and, uh, and a tape line. It almost as if something was taped here or either that or the cellophane was taped um, shut and it was actually taped to the owner's manual or something of that extent. But anyway, this is from 1978. We still have it. It's still in great condition. So anyway, little history on the vehicle. Back in 1978, um, the original owner that purchased the car, this was before my time, actually this was long before I was even planned of, uh, the owner purchased this vehicle from a dealership brand new. He then went and decided that he wanted extended warranty on the vehicle. And this is the extended warranty. Okay. So, optional extension of limited warranty for used General Motors Cars of Canada. And it's been typed. So the uh, warranty lasted up until roughly 1980, 1981. Um, so just leave that there. That was found in the owner's manual. It was around halfway through. Here's um, the warranty information booklet. Okay. Warranty information on 1978 new Buick cars. Okay. So you know, we got a little bit of tire information on the back. And if we open the pamphlet, it, uh, it tells you what is covered in the warranty and what isn't. Um, this is basically, you know, even still with today's new vehicles, if you were to buy a GM vehicle, uh, damage due to accidents, misuse, or alterations, you know, that's, uh, you know, GM has its uh, back covered with stuff like this and people who try and you know, use and abuse the system. So what it does cover it is GM's, you know, faults from the factory. You know, if anybody ever made a mistake um, putting your car together on the show, on the uh, factory line, well, you know what, if something were to happen during the first uh, two months of your ownership, well then, you know, it's covered. But it's not covered if you overload your car or damage from the environment or damage due to lack of maintenance and so forth and on forth. So <clears throat> that is that. So that's the basic warranty. Then we have here 1978 Buick Passenger Car Maintenance Schedule. Now this schedule basically tells you what you're supposed to do at when you're supposed to do it so a lot of new vehicles that even have this today so for example um, every 12 months or 7500 miles uh, chassis lubrication fluid levels check engine oil change oil filter change and tire rotation they actually recommend that every 7500 kilometers or every 7500 miles so or every year I usually rotate my tires a lot sooner than that, but they also recommend a rear axle lubricant change and cooling system check. Now, normally, I only change my um, my axle uh, lubricant uh, the same time I change my transmission fluid. 
because it's a drivetrain component. So actually, in this maintenance schedule, they actually recommend it a lot sooner than that, which is actually very, very interesting. But anyway, nonetheless, it still gets done. So anyway, uh, so yeah, we have all this important pertinent information. Um, 15,000 miles, oxygen sensor change, if so equipped, which no vehicle ever did. Um, at least not this, uh, power enrichment control valve check on a turbocharged four barrel. And we don't have that. Engine timing adjustment and or distributor check. So anyway, <clears throat> so forth and onwards, you know, we have all this stuff. So that's what is listed in here. And you have a whole bunch of additional safety information. Um, but that... So that is the 1978 Buick Passenger Car Maintenance Schedule. And if we take note, the paper is an absolutely crystal clear quality. You swear that it was never, never removed from this booklet. Now, taking note, we have a Firestone limited warranty Firestone passenger tires. The only problem with this is that uh, this car doesn't have those tires on it anymore. It has Michelins, and the tires are good, but this this here won't pertain to anything anymore because it does not have Firestone tires. The only thing is, is that it does have a full-size Firestone spare tire in the trunk, and it's a full-size spare. They didn't have donuts back then. Uh, at least not to my recollection. I didn't, I think that became a thing after 1980, 1981, when they decided to downsize vehicles, but they still needed a spare tire in the vehicle. So when they started making smaller cars and shortening them, uh, they, well, somebody got the bright idea to start making donuts. So you had more space. Anyway, so forth. And we have the original safety standard certificate from 1978. So even though it's a new car, it still has to um, be looked at by a mechanic. It'd be done at the dealership, of course. Same with a new vehicle. You know, they do what is known as a PDI or pre-delivery inspection. Um, nor, now, normally when somebody buys a vehicle, it still has to be safetyed. Even though it's a new car, it still has to be checked over by a mechanic. And that's exactly what happened back in 1978. So we have uh, very pertinent information here. It's, it was listed as a, as a dealership. Uh, it has the inspection uh, number. It has the uh, name of the inspecting mechanic on here. And, um, yeah... It was done April 24th, 1978. So, um, what else we have? And this is the purchaser. Now this gentleman is deceased. And the safety standard certificates lasted for 36 days, but Nowadays, they're only good for 32 days. Actually, they might still be good for 36 days. I might be wrong on that. But anyway, this is the original safety standard certificate for 1978 for this car. And the fact of the matter is, is that it's still here, and the paper is still in good condition, and it's 38 years old. That's something worth holding on to. So... That was in the cellophane folder. Now, I know a lot of you guys aren't going to like this information, but uh, I just thought, you know, there's a lot of people out there that are kind of like me, that kind of care and, and like to keep all sorts of documentation that you get with a vehicle, and you like to keep it in, you know, somewhat tip-top condition, and you like to keep it all together because, like I say, it's the icing on the cake when you buy a used car. If you buy a really old car and it's in and it's in very good condition, well, then it's just kind of nice to have. 
so that if you do take it to a car show, you can display it proudly on your dash. Normally what I do every year is display that on my vehicle dashboard all laid out. Same with my 83 electric. So that way when somebody comes on, somebody gawking and looking around, some 70 year old man for, for example, would come around and look at it. They like that stuff. They like to see that a, a young lad, a young gentleman, usually in his mid-twenties, actually taking care of something like this and actually still has the documentation. It brings back old memories. So, I keep everything all in tip-top order and normally I don't leave it in the vehicle. Uh, I do leave it actually in the house in a safe deposit box kind of thing locked away. I don't normally leave them in a vehicle. Usually the only thing that I leave in the glove compartment of vehicles is, uh, well, legal documents that I need to actually drive it. Proof of insurance and my ownership or my, what you call it, license and registration. So I uh, normally just keep that in the vehicle at all times. The owner's literature usually just stays in the house. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this little bit of uh, useless information. I know it's a waste, but I mean, there are a lot of you guys that kind of like this kind of stuff, too. I know I sure do. It's not every day where you buy a 38-year-old car and you see everything in mint condition. Like, it just came off the assembly line, especially the documents that came with the car. And the paper isn't even yellowed to show its age. It's almost as if the car is still brand new, even to this day. But it's not. It's vintage. It's 1978. And yet all the documents are still there. So I kind of like to keep track of it and hold on to it. Keep it in a safe spot. I don't normally leave it in the car. But it's still nice to know that it's still there. Anyway guys, I'm done rambling for tonight. You guys have yourself a nice evening. Take care of yourself. Don't party too hard.